In this video, we take a closer look at the design and operation of a rotary lobe pump. This is also known as a roots blower. The animation shows the design of a rotary lobe pump. The centerpiece is the pair of counter-rotating lobes. The lobes are also known as rotors or vanes. The fluid to be pumped is pushed between the casing and the rotating vanes. In the case of compressible substances such as gases, compression takes place on the discharge side of the pump. The pump is then referred to as a compressor. The roots blower is usually driven by an electric motor mounted at the rear. A pair of gears ensures that the lobes rotate in opposite directions. The lobes therefore do not drive each other through the contact of their veins. In fact, there even has to be a small clearance between the lobes, as otherwise the high speeds would cause high friction and wear on the rotors. Lobe pumps are used in applications where a continuous flow of air or gas is required. Typical applications include aeration systems in sewage and water treatment plants, where air is pumped into the wastewater to aid biological decomposition. In the food industry, rotary lobe pumps can be used to move food products such as grain, rice, or chocolate. Lobe pumps are also used in vacuum technology to pump air or gases from a closed system. Lobe pumps are also used as compressors for supercharging combustion engines. This will be discussed in more detail later. Rotary lobe pumps are characterized by high reliability, low vibration, and noise levels. They also require little maintenance. The shape of the veins is considered in more detail in the following. These are made up of cycloids and therefore correspond in principle to cycloidal gears. However, as mentioned earlier, there is no power transmission between the veins as there is in conventional gears. To construct the cycloidal rotor shape, Two equal-sized rolling circles are rolled on a base circle. The diameter of the base circle is four times the diameter of the rolling circles. Rolling on the outside of the base circle gives an epicycloid. Rolling on the inside gives a hypocycloid. Two of these two-lobed veins then form a pair of rotary lobes. In practice, three-lobed rotors are usually used instead of two-lobed rotors. Furthermore, in order to achieve continuous compression and thus avoid pressure surges, the vanes are twisted around their axis of rotation. In this way, one section of the rotor is always engaged and the fluid being pumped is continuously compressed. The cross-sectional profile of the three-lobed rotary vanes also consists of cycloids. Such vanes are constructed in the same way by rolling a circle on a base circle. The diameter of the base circle is six times the diameter of the rolling circle. As already mentioned, rotary lobe pumps are also used for supercharging combustion engines. These roots blowers or roots type superchargers are usually seen on so-called muscle cars, where the compressors are clearly visible on the hood. Roots type superchargers are usually driven by a belt drive that is connected to the engine. The animation schematically shows the design of a roots blower. Air is drawn in through a slot at the front and enters the roots blower housing, which is fitted with cooling fins to cool the air during compression. Inside the roots blower are the two three-lobed vanes which pump the air between the rotor and the inner wall of the casing from the suction side downwards to the discharge side. The accumulation of air on the discharge side increases the pressure there and the air is compressed accordingly. The undesirable increase in temperature during compression is counteracted by the already mentioned cooling fins on the casing. The compressed and cooled air is then forced into the combustion engine. As a result, more air reaches the engine cylinders, allowing more fuel to be burned and increasing the engine's power output. The pressure ratio between the discharge and suction sides of a roots blower is usually a maximum of 2. Depending on the speed, the efficiency in these cases is approximately 50%. At higher pressure ratios, the efficiency drops significantly. In general, the smaller the pressure difference, the more efficient the roots-type supercharger.